straightway forgetting what manner of man he was. Because what the word does is this word cleans you up. But when you stop listening to it, it stops cleaning you up. And if you forget it, you can go back to being how you were. Verse 25, go ahead. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. Go ahead. And continueth therein. He being not a forgetful hearer. But a what? But a doer of the work. What's going to happen with him? This man shall be blessed in his deed. He said, but the one that looks into the perfect law of liberty. Because what the word will do for you, it will free you from death. It will free you from the penalty of sin. He said, but whoso looking in the perfect law of liberty, knowing what God will is, and believing in that, being obedient unto it. He said, he being not a forgetful hearer, he said, but a doer of the work. You are applying understanding and wisdom to the knowledge that you've acquired. He said, that's the man that's going to be blessed in his deed. As Jesus said in Revelation, blessed are those that keep his commandments because they're going to have a right to the tree of life, which is in the midst of the God. But turn over to Acts, the second chapter. Because he said, you got to be a doer of the word. Did he not? Acts, the second chapter. And we're going to see one of the things that you must do in order to acquire God's spirit. Two, and pick it up at verse number 36. Two and 36. You go ahead when you get there. This is Peter. On the day of Pentecost. Once he's gotten the people's attention, they were speaking in tongues, speaking in different languages. And the reason why that took place was so that they could gather a crowd. They could gather the people's attention. And once they got their attention, Peter started preaching to them. But what does he say? Go ahead. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Go ahead. That God had made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ. So he evidenced the Messiah. He evidenced that Jesus, the one that they had crucified, that he was the Christ. He was the anointed one. The one that they had put to death was the Son of God. And what did the people do when they realized this? Verse 37, go ahead. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts. He said they were convicted in their minds. And what did they tell Peter? Go ahead. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, uh -huh. men and brethren, what shall we do? So they wanted to know what is it that they could do? What is it that they could do realizing the error that they had committed? What did Peter tell them? Go ahead. And Peter said unto them. What? Repent. He said, first thing you repent and do what? And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For what reason? For the remission of sin. And what's going to happen? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the gift that Jesus said the Father would give you. He said, if you repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus you're going to receive forgiveness for your sins and also you're going to receive the gift and that gift is God's spirit. You're going to receive the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. For the promise is unto you and to your children. Not just to them, but this is for everybody. Everybody has an opportunity for this. He said, for the promise is unto you and to your children. And to who? And to all that are for even Unto us. Go ahead. Even as many as the Lord our God shall come. Turn over to Ezekiel, the 18th chapter. Because Peter said, repent and be baptized. And we're going to see what it means to repent. Because there's nothing new. Peter wasn't telling them, wasn't giving them a new message. That's a message that's found throughout the Bible. And that is for the need for man to repent, to change, to stop walking contrary to the Lord. It's the same message that Jesus gave Israel here. And the reason I say Jesus, because with understanding, you know that's the only God 
that man has ever known. The father, you've never seen his shape or heard his voice at any time. What did the Lord say? Because they had been questioning God's judgment. Because what they had wanted was they want the son to bear the burden of the father's sin. And Jesus had told him, the soul that sent it, that's the, that's the one that's going to die. In other words, the individual that does the wrong, that's the one that's going to pay the price. And they had told him, pick it up at verse number 29. What did they say? What did the Lord tell them? Because they were questioning God's judgment. What did he say? It said, the house of Israel, uh -huh. the way of the Lord is not equal. Go ahead. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? And what? Are not your ways unequal? He said, you're the one that has the wrong judgment. And what is he going to do? Therefore, verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Go ahead. Everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. He said, I'm going to judge you according to your deeds. He said, I'm going to judge every one of you according to your works. Therefore, what? Repent. And do what? And turn yourselves. From all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your root. He said, you got to repent. He said, you got to turn yourselves from your transgressions. He said, so your unrighteousness will not be your demise or be the cause for your destruction. Do what? Go ahead. Cast away from you all your transgressions. Call, do away with all that that causes you to go contrary to God. He said, cast away from you all your transgressions. Whereby you have transgressed and do what? And make you a new heart and a new spirit. You creating you a new mindset. He said you making you a new heart and a new spirit. Go ahead. But why will ye die in your house of Israel? Go ahead. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. The Lord said I have no pleasure in the death of man. He said I have no pleasure in him that dieth. It tells you in Revelation, Jesus was the one that created all things, including man. And all things were created for his pleasure. He takes no pleasure in the death of man. We brought death upon ourselves as a result of our disobedience. He said, but I have no pleasure in the death of him that died. He said, therefore, you got to create in you a new mindset. You got to create in you a new heart. You got to create in you a new spirit. Go ahead. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. You got to change. And if you do that, he's not talking about living just this physical life. He's talking about eternal life. But turn over to Romans, the 12th chapter. Because Paul's going to tell us the same thing. He's going to tell us what that means when he say creating you a new heart and a new spirit. Because just like the Lord Paul is telling us that you got to turn from your transgressions. You got to stop sinning. Because sin is simply the transgression of the law. It is the breaking of God's commandments. Romans 12 and verse 1. 12 and 1. What does Paul say? Go ahead. I beseech you therefore, brethren, uh -huh. By the mercies of God. That you do what? That he present your bodies a living sacrifice. Go ahead. Holy, acceptable unto God. Uh -huh. Which is your reasonable service. And again, he's telling us, you're responsible for this. He said, I beg you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God that you do this. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You're to be holy and acceptable unto God. And that acceptability is not based on man's standards. It is based on the word of God. That's what teaches you how to be holy. That's what teaches you how to be righteous and upright in the eyes of God. It's his word. He says, so therefore I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. He said, which is your reasonable service. What did Solomon say? He said the whole duty of man is to fear God and to keep his commands. That's your responsibility. Verse number two. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this word. But do what? And be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's how you create in you a new spirit and a new heart. You got to create in you a new mindset. 
You got to stop doing those things that you used to do that were contrary to God. And in order to do that, you got to change your thoughts. You got to change your perspective, how you look at life. You got to start operating not with this natural mind, but with your spiritual mind that you acquire from God. He said, you be conformed not to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may do what? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Turn over to Philippians. Because Paul said, you got it renewing you. You have to, re have to have the renewing of your mind. It's the Lord said, you got to create in you a, a new spirit, a new heart. And we're going to see what is the mindset that we're to have. Because again, Jesus is our example. And we're to pattern ourselves after him. Was not Jesus full of the Holy Ghost? Was he not full of God's spirit? Two and five, what did Paul say? Because he said you got to have renewing you. A different mindset. Two and five, what does he say? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Then he's letting you know, you're to have a godly mindset. He said, you let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And again, Jesus was full of God's spirit. But this is not a normal mindset. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who did what? Go ahead. Being in the form of God. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He humbled himself. He said, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God because he was God in the beginning. John tells you that he took on the form of a flesh and blood man and dwelt among us. Jesus was God. God is a spirit and spirits cannot die. And in order for him to die for the sins of man, he had to take on the form of a man. He had to shed his blood. But go ahead, verse number seven. But man himself with no reputation, and took upon him the form of a serpent. Go ahead. And was made in the likeness of me. Again, he was unassuming. He was not self-important. He was humble. He was a carpenter. But go ahead, verse number eight. And being found in fashion as a man. What did he do? He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Think about it. the one who created the heavens and the earth and all that there is. He became part of his own creation so that he could allow that which he had created to put him to death. And he did that all for man. That's what Paul said. I beseech you by the sure mercies of God. That's a merciful God. He said, in being found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself and became obedient. He said, even the death of the cross. He submitted his will to that of the Father, even though he meant, even though he knew that that meant that he was going to have to give up his life. That's why when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he began praying to the Father because he knew that it was the time of his death that it was near. He asked the Father to let this cup pass, and he said, if not, thy will be done. Jesus did not want to die, but he knew that that's what he was sent him for. He knew that that was part of his mission. And so he was obedient, even though it meant that it was going to cause him his life. Paul is saying, we have to have that same spirit, that same mindset. See, we only want to be obedient to God because of the inconveniences, inconveniences that it causes us. We think about it, we say, well, see, the Lord said concerning the Sabbath, you to keep it holy. We say, well, I got things to do on Saturday. That's the day I got to go out and I got to clean my car, I got to go shop. I got to do all those things that I didn't do during the week. Or we get offended.
Because the majority of people are worshiping God, not according to God's commandments, according to his word, not according to his spirit. They're worshiping God according to the words of a man. Emperor Constantine decreed in 321 that Sunday was going to be the day, the official day of worship for Christians. To be a Christian means to be a follower of Christ. How are you following? Why is somebody following Jesus if they won't do nothing that God has written in his Bible? I mean absolutely nothing. 99.9% .9 of what people do, or the majority of people who call themselves Christians, have no clue of what's written in the Bible, ain't trying to find out what's written in the Bible, and if it's pointed out to them, they have no understanding, none whatsoever. They sit there in total ignorance. I was one of them. I know. You just go, you listen, you pay, your, you pay some money, I, I had enough sense to know I ain't going to even go into that. But I understood game when I saw game. But it was something that you do. You're raised that way. My, my grandmother, the church was started in our home. My family church. We all went to church. We knew about church. We just didn't know nothing about God. But turn over. To Isaiah, the 55th chapter. He said, let this man be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 55. Because the Lord is telling you also, you got to change your mindset. He's going to tell you why. Isaiah 55 and 1. 55 and 1. You go ahead when you get there. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the water. Go ahead. He that have no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. He's letting you know, look, if you have a thirst for life, if you want to live forever, he say, oh, everyone that thirsts, he say, you come to the waters. And the waters that he's talking about, he's talking about himself. Jesus tells you in Jeremiah, he is the fountain of living waters. He said, everyone that thirsts, you come to the waters, and he that have no money, you let him come. He can buy and eat, yet yeah, come by wine and milk. You don't need any wealth for this. All you need is a desire to serve God. All you need is a desire to know him. All you need is a desire to want to please him. You just come to him. Verse number two. What does he say? Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not great? Uh-huh. And your labor for that which satisfies not. He said, why are you doing that? Why are you spending money for that which is not great? And he likens his word to those things that are essential to life. He said, but why are you paying for that? You're paying for that which is which did not satisfy you. You're paying for that which does not profit you. Go ahead. Hearken diligently unto me. He said, you make sure you do this and do what? And eat ye that which is good. Uh-huh. And let your soul delight itself in fact. He said, you make sure you do this. You eat that which is good that's going to be beneficial unto you. He said, and then you let your soul delight in the abundance thereof. And he's going to tell you how it is that you eat. Go ahead. Incline your ear and come unto me. And do what? Hear, and your soul shall live. He said, you incline your ear, and you seek me, and you hear. And if you do that, if you hearken unto me, he said, then you shall live. You got to be a doer of the word, but not a hearer only. Because what is he going to do? Go ahead. I will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of day. And again, this is an open invitation that the Lord is making. He said, if you come unto me, if you seek me, you'll find me. But then you have to be obedient to my word. You have to hearken unto what it is that God is saying. And what he is saying is written in his word. It's simple. The word of God it's not complicated. We make things complicated. He tells you exactly what it is that you should and should not do 
and the reasons for it. And then we'll give you countless and untold examples of proving himself. And men will still not, I mean still, reject the word of God. It makes absolutely no sense. Verse number six. Go ahead. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Go ahead. Call ye upon him while he is near. While you still have the opportunity, you seek the Lord. Don't wait until it's too late. You call on him while you still can. He said, you seek the Lord while he may be found. You call upon him while he is still near. Go ahead. Let the wicked forsake his way. You got to change. Go ahead. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. He said, let the wicked forsake his ways and the righteous man his thoughts and let him do what? And let him return unto the Lord. Again, you got to repent. Start walking contrary unto the Lord. And what will the Lord do? And he will have mercy upon him. He's a merciful God. Go ahead. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Again, he'll grant you forgiveness. Go ahead. But my thoughts are not your thoughts. They're what? Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. He said, look, the thoughts of man are not his thoughts. That's why you got to create in you a new mindset. Create in you a new spirit. You got to replace your spirit with God's spirit. You got to acquire a godly mindset. He said, because my thoughts are not your thoughts. Because what are the thoughts of man? It's only evil continually. He tells you that. In Genesis, he said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. He said, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. Why do people do wrong? It's because of the wrong thoughts that they have. They sit there, they concoct and conjure up all this foolishness and then allow it to manifest itself. Because we don't give any, and when I say we, I speak of myself. When you rely on your own natural thinking, you you don't really give thought as to what it is that you are doing. You don't even realize how wretched you are. I used to think I was a good person. I truly thought that. Until I looked and read this book and realized I had no clue what being righteous truly is. I had no clue how to please God. I always believed that there was a God. But most people that knew me would say, that's a good guy. Good in the eyes of man means absolutely nothing. What you want to do is you want to hear from the Lord. Well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what you want to hear from the Lord. And not saying, I hear that because I know my best. I'm nothing, as the Lord said, at your best, you like a filthy rag. But at least let me be trying. Let me die trying to serve the Lord. Because then I would have known that I've done all that I, that I can. I've never said one has to be the best, but you got to give your best effort. That's what God is requiring of us. You got to try but go ahead. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. He's going to let us know how far apart we are from God when it comes to our mindset. He said, for as the heavens are higher than the earth. Go ahead. So are my ways higher than your ways. It's immeasurable how far our mind is from that of God. He said, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. Go ahead. And my thoughts than your thoughts. And again, that's why we got to replace our thoughts with God's thoughts. Go ahead, verse 10. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, Go ahead. and returneth not thither, Go ahead. but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. In other words, he's letting you know, these things don't return until they accomplish what the Lord is sent it to. Go ahead, verse 11. So so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. What's going to happen? It shall not return unto me void. Go ahead. But it shall accomplish that which I please. Uh-huh. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. All that God has said must come to pass. And if the word, the Lord send you his word, and you are receptive to it, it'll prosper in you. His spirit will grow in you. 
and it'll allow you to replace your spirit with his spirit. Turn over to Ezekiel, the 36th chapter. Ezekiel 36. Because we're going to see again, it's the word of God that brings about a change in you. We're to be filled with God's spirit. As Paul said, let his mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. But the only way that you can get, acquire that, is you got to replace your thoughts with God's thoughts. You got to replace those things that are contrary to God with a right way of thinking. Ezekiel 36, in verse number 17. Ezekiel 36. And 17. And here the Lord is talking about Israel and what he's going to do regarding them. 36 and 17. You go ahead when you get there. Son of man. Uh -huh. The house of Israel dwelt in their own land. What did they do? They defiled it by their own way and by their doing. Go ahead. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. And therefore, what did the Lord do? Wherefore, I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land. Go ahead. And for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. Because of their idolatry and their wickedness, what did the Lord ultimately end up doing? Go ahead. He said, I poured out my fury upon them for what they had done. And ultimately, what was the judgment that he poured upon Israel? Go ahead. And I scattered them among the heathen. And they were dispersed through the country. He said, I sent them in a slavery all over this world, this world, from one end of this earth to the other. He said, I scattered amongst the nations. He said, they were dispersed through the country. Go ahead. According to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. And therefore, as a result of his judgment, Israel is in captivity even until this day. But drop down to verse number 22. Go ahead. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, so house of Israel. But why is the Lord going to do this? But, Go ahead. But for mine holy name's sake, uh -huh. which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. Again, this is future, but what is he going to do? Go ahead. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. Go ahead. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God. When I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. Because everybody's going to know the true and living God when this takes place. And what is that? Verse number 24. Go ahead. But I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries. Uh -huh. And will bring you into your own land. Did he say in Jeremiah that he was going to bring them back into Zion? He was going to give them pastors after his heart. They were going to feed the people with knowledge and understanding. He said, I'm going to take you from amongst the nation. He said, I'm going to gather you, Israel. From out of all countries. And I'm going to bring you back into your own land. Then what is the Lord going to do? Verse 25. Go ahead. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. Uh huh. You shall be clean. Go ahead. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. And this water that he's talking about sprinkling upon the people is just simply talking about his word. Tells you in Psalms where will a man clean his ways but by the word of God. He said, I'm going to sprinkle clean water upon you and you're going to be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. He said, well, I cleanse you. Go ahead. And new heart also will I give you and a new spirit. A new mindset. He said, a new heart will also give you. He said, now I'm creating you a new spirit. He said, well, I'll put within you. Go ahead. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. Go ahead. And I will give you a heart to flesh. Again. You're going to have a new mindset, a God. Go ahead, verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you. Uh -huh. Cause you to walk in my statutes. And do what? And you shall keep my judgments and do them. He said, I'm going to put my spirit in you. Again, what is his spirit? He's talking about his wisdom, his understanding, his knowledge. He said, I'm going to put my spirit within you. He said, and I'm going to cause you to walk in my statutes. You're going to be obedient, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. Turn over to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Because we're going to see that the water that cleans you up is the word of God. Because what it does is it instructs you. It tells you what it is that you should and should not do. 
and gives you the consequences thereof. It tells you how to govern yourself. God created man and then gave him the manual to follow in order to live a fruitful and a fulfilling life. Five, and pick it up at verse number 25. Five and 25. What does it say? Husbands, love your wife. Go ahead. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for. He shed his blood for the remission of the forgiveness of our sin. And Paul here is saying, that's the love that a man is supposed to have for his wife. Jesus died for the church. He said, husbands, you love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That what? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Again, he said that he might sanctify. And it is the word of God that sanctifies you. It's the word of God that sets you apart if you are obedient to it. He said that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. It is the word of God that cleans you up. Because it tells, he's telling you to repent. But that has to be according to something. It has to be in accordance to his word. Go ahead. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. He said without sin, so that your garment could be clean and white. He said that it might present it himself a glory, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. Go ahead. Or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Did not Paul say? That you are to make yourself holy. And it has to be according to something. And it is according to God's word. But turn over to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. The Lord said, knowledge is not enough. We're to pattern ourselves after the Lord. And we're going to see how one is supposed to act once they take on a godly mindset. 4 and 17. 4 and 17. You go ahead when you get there. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord, go ahead. that he henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. He said, look, Paul said, you can't live your life in the way in which you used to. He said, you can't walk as the others do. He said, in the futility of their mind, verse 18, go ahead. Having the understanding dark, uh -huh. being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. He said, Having the understanding darkened and being alienated from God because of their ignorance. Because of the blindness of their heart. Verse 19, go ahead. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. Go ahead. To work all uncleanness with grievous. But what? But he had not so learned Christ. He said, but you've not learned this. Go ahead. If so be that ye have heard him. Go ahead. Have been taught by him. As the truth is in Jesus. Because once you come to the Lord, you have something to do. And what is that? That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man. That old conduct. Go ahead in word and in deed. He's going to let you know. He said you got to put off concerning the former conversation of how you used to live the things that you used to do. That's what he refers to as the old man, which is what? Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Which is corrupt in his thinking. The Lord say, my, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and therefore your ways are not my ways. So you need God's spirit. You need to replace your thoughts with his thoughts, which will in turn change your ways to be like him. Go ahead. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. He said you got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He said, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Because he said, let this spirit be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Go ahead. And that ye put on the new man. Which is what? Which after God is created in righteousness and true hope. Yeah, you got to pattern yourself after Jesus. He is our example. Go ahead. Wherefore, putting away lying. Go ahead. Speak every man truth with his name. And he's not talking about half truth. He said, wherefore, putting away lying. He said, and you speak every man truth with his name. Why? Go ahead. We are members one of another. And I always say that doesn't give people the right to be crass. Or they say, well, I'm keeping it real. I'm, I'm telling it like it is. I'm being truthful. Not saying giving one a right to be offensive 
in their language. What it's talking about, don't be slanderous. Don't be a tailbearer. Don't go around lying on people. And if someone has done something, you let them know. There's nothing wrong with that. You be truthful about it. And the other person should be willing to be receptive to the criticism that they're receiving. He said, wherefore, putting away lying and speak every man truth with his neighbor. He said, for we are members one of another. We are all of the same body, all of the same church. Go ahead, verse 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Did he say, don't get angry? No, he said, be ye angry. You can get angry. You, it would be impossible for a person not to get angry. He said, but don't allow your anger to cause you to sin. He said, be ye angry. He said, but don't sin. Go ahead and neither what? Let not the sun go down upon your right. Look, don't allow your ill feelings to sit there and fester. Because then what's going to take place is you're going to look for revenge. And the Lord said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. He said, so you can get angry, but don't sin. He said, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. What you do if somebody has done something to offend you, let them know. And then you allow whatever their response, you allow that to be. If they're receptive to what it is that you're telling them, then all is well. And if they're not receptive to what you're telling them, still all is well. But don't you lay on your bed at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning and say, oh, that person has done me wrong. Because you know that person that's done you wrong, you know what they're doing at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning? Sleeping good. Thinking about how they're going to do somebody else wrong. Verse number 28. Go ahead. Let him that stole steal no more. But do what? But rather let him lay by working with his hands the thing which is good. Go ahead. That he may have to give to him that need. Again, this is a person taking on a godly mindset. Even the thief whose job it was to watch you go to work so he could take from you. Now he's willing to not only to go to work, but he would be willing to even impart what he has worked for to others who are less fortunate. Verse 29. I'm sorry. Thank you. Go to John, the 12th chapter. He said, Cause let him that stole steal no more. Go over to John. The 12th chapter. Because it's important to realize that you got to do more than just hear this word in order to get God's spirit. You have to allow yourself to be governed by it. And we see the example of that exhibited in the life of Judas, one of Jesus' apostles. He was with the Lord for three and a half years. And look at what he did. John 12 and verse number 1. 12 and 1. You go ahead when you get there. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Now, Jesus was doing all kinds of miracles, even raising men from the dead. And Judas was witness to this. He saw it. Verse 2, go ahead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served him. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, Go ahead. Very costly. And anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. What is Judas going to do? Go ahead. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Now, he appeared to be compassionate. He appeared to be caring. He is saying it appears to be the right thing. It is Mary has taken this ointment. It's very costly. And she's anointing the feet of Jesus. And Judas is saying, why didn't you take that ointment and sell it and then give the proceeds to the poor? But he, he said that because he was caring. Why did he say it? Verse number six. This he said, not that he cared for the poor. But what? But because he was a thief. Uh-huh. And had the bag and bear what was put therein. Again, he said the right things. But his actions did what? His action told another story. It told of another spirit that was within Judas. That's what I always say. 
You don't have to listen to a person talk about, I got this spirit within me. All you have to do is observe with a person, not what they say necessarily, but what it is that they do. One's actions tell the story. For the most part, you know whether or not they are operating by the word of God and the way in which they worship God and the way in which they treat their fellow man. It's really not that complicated. See, we've taken the word spirit and made it all convoluted as if we don't understand what it is. But we know what it is. And ministers, a lot of them use it to hide behind it so they can continue to do what they want to do and confuse their congregation. But it's real simple. The Lord is not complicated. He's not going to tell you to do something that's too complicated for you to even comprehend it or understand it. How would that be a just God? He's not giving you trigonometry and you in the first grade. He's simply saying, this is my commandment. Be obedient unto it. And what we do is we want to do what we want to do. We want to follow our own natural mindset. Judas, again, he's not reading about Jesus. Judas is actually there. See, we can read about the raising of the dead and believe it. Judas is witness to it. But he was a thief. But now when he came to the Lord, was he not supposed to repent? Did we not read, did not Paul say that him that stole steal no more? But evidently Judas didn't get the message. And that's because Judas never got God's spirit. He never, he didn't take the engrafted word with meekness. He didn't humble himself. He was there, but he was just there in body only. Turn over to Luke, the 22nd chapter. We will see what happened when Judas was tempted of Satan. 22, the verse number one. And if he tempted a Satan, just simply means Satan's an angel. And what you're really being tempted of is your own lust, your own desire. Judas was a thief, and as a result of that, that's going to cause his eternal damnation. 22 and one. Go ahead when you get there. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh. Go ahead. Which is called the Passover. Uh -huh. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Go ahead. Then entered Satan into Judas' surname Discarat, being of the number of the twelve. Again, all that when it says that then entered Satan into Judas, an angel didn't enter into him. What it was is talking about the thought that Judas had was an evil thought. Everything that is contrary to God is attributable well, to say. If you remember, if you think about it, when the Lord, when the Lord was talking about how he was going to die, and Peter told him, not so, Lord, far be it from you. This should never happen. And what did Jesus say to Peter? He said, get behind me, Satan, for you savors the things that be of men and not of God. Peter didn't mean no harm when he was saying that the Lord wasn't going to die. He didn't want him to die. But that was totally contrary to God's plan of salvation for man because if Jesus had not shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins, all this would be mute. All this would be an exercise in futility. So he said, that Satan entered into Judas, just talking about the evil thought that he had. And what was that? Go ahead. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains. Go ahead. How he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. So they agreed to give Judas 30 pieces of silver to betray the Lord. And why is that? Because Judas never eradicated those thoughts. He never eradicated that wrong way of thinking. See, 
To do wrong means to do wrong. But what precedes that wrongdoing is the thought. That's why you have to change your thoughts. Because when confronted with the opportunity, if you've been battling the thought all along, chances are you can still win the battle. But if the thought of doing wrong has been resting in your mind, when the opportunity comes along, then the action is just an extension of the thought. If you're thinking of stealing, if you're thinking of getting something for nothing, when the opportunity comes, even though it's wrong, you're gonna be prone to fall prey to it. Old comedian used to say the devil made me do it. Yeah, the devil in you. That's who made him do it. It was himself. And then he turned around, and he, even when he realized, truly realized the error of his way, he still didn't repent. Why do I say that? Because instead of calling on God's mercy, he said, I take matters into my own hands. And he hung himself. The Lord say, don't steal. And he's the same God to say, and don't commit murder. And that means murdering oneself. You can't commit suicide and think you're getting out of something. That almost seals your faith. And when I say it almost seals your faith, because if you commit suicide, you can't repent. You're dead. And that's what Judas did. But turn over to Romans, the eighth chapter. Because he was with Jesus. And it didn't benefit him. And why was that? Because again, he never acquired the Lord's spirit. And Paul's letting you know that here. In order to truly serve God, you have to acquire his spirit. You have to acquire the Holy Ghost. And that's simply saying you have to acquire God's knowledge and understanding and the wisdom that comes from him. Romans 8 and verse 5. 85. What does Paul say? Go ahead. For they that are after the flesh to mind the things of the flesh. Again, you're going to operate according to your cardinal desires. He said, but they that are after the flesh, they do according to the things of the flesh. Go ahead. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. But if you're being led by the word of God, then you're going to do those things, do things in according to God's word. He said, if you live in your life after the flesh, you're going to mind the things of the flesh. He said, but if you are after the spirit, then you're going to do the things of the spirit. Go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death. But what? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. He said, now to be carnally minded is death. And he's talking about eternal damnation. Because all of us, if we don't live until the second coming of the Lord, we all got this first of the physical death coming. He said, but then to be spiritually minded, having a godly mindset, he said, that's life and that's peace. And the peace comes from the fact of knowing that if you serve God to the best of your ability, he's just going to raise you from the dead. But go ahead, verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. The natural mind. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. It will not be obedient. And that's why you got to transform it. You got to change your mindset. And take on a godly mindset. Go ahead. <clears throat> so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But what? But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Again. Those with a cardinal mind, a fleshly mind, you can't serve God. I don't care how much, I don't care how much they go to church. You, most majority of people call themselves serving God, praising the Lord. I doing it on the wrong day. Never, you can't read it not once in the Bible where the Lord told you to have a holy convocation on the first day of the week. Or that that's the weekly Sabbath. You can't find that anywhere in the Bible. 
people serve the Lord, they're serving a God of convenience. And why is that? Because it is more important to them to please their own desires than it is to please God. And you cannot do that. He said, but ye that are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if you're allowing your life to be governed by the word of God, that's what makes you be in the spirit. That's you having God's spirit dwell within you. That's you having a godly mindset when you do the things of God. Because it's not natural. And when I say it's not natural, you may want to do something else. This morning, what did I want to do? Wanted to sleep. But I couldn't sleep. Went to bed late last night. Why was that? Because I was doing something knowing I had to teach on it, knowing I had to deal with it. But I could have been up doing something else. But I could not do it. Why? Because it's the Sabbath. So I refrained myself from doing things on God's holy day. But that might not be your natural inclination. Your natural inclination, I had talked to my wife earlier, I said, we could make some popcorn. So then we could have, we eat the popcorn late at night. So I was thinking, I said, man, we didn't make that popcorn. When it took me but five minutes to go down there and make some popcorn, would it? But I said, I can't do that. Why? My natural mind was saying, hey, you could, you could get some popcorn. But I know that I'm not supposed to. So I lay there and I eat my sucker. I had a bag of suckers next to the bed. I just ate that. I said, this will suffice. I know I ain't supposed to be eating them, but it'll work. I ain't had no potato chips. I ain't gonna go into all that. I ain't ate no potato chips in, in so long. I'm thinking about them right now, but go ahead. Now, if any man <laughs> have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Go ahead. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. He said, look, now, if you don't have the Holy Ghost within you, if you don't have God's spirit dwelling within you, you don't belong unto the Lord. He said, and if Christ be in you, he said, the body is dead because of sin. He said, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Because what you're going to do because of the word of God, you're going to mortify your members. In other words, you're going to put them to death. You're going to stop doing those things that are contrary to the Lord because you're going to be led by the word of God. Verse number 11. Go ahead. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Talking about the spirit that comes from the Father. If it, He said, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, if you have the Holy Ghost within you, then what? He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. It's going, to be, it's going to cause you to be raised from the dead. That's why you have peace of mind. Because you know that you are living this life to the best of your ability according to what does say the Lord. Death awaits all of us. As I said, we don't live until the second coming of the Lord. All of us are going to perish. But it's one thing. You know that when you call on, the God, on God, you know you are calling on the true and living God. And you know that you know how to serve him. It's not second guessing. It's not a maybe or if. You know that you are serving him. And if you truly believe that Jesus was raised from the dead because he was obedient unto the Father, even unto death, the same spirit that was in Jesus that caused him to be obedient, Paul said, let this spirit be in you. And that's the spirit that's going to cause you to be raised from the dead. That's what having the Holy Ghost is. That's what having a godly mindset is. It has nothing to do with running up and down the aisle shouting has nothing to do with being able to quote scripture. Standing up for an hour can quote verse after verse after verse means absolutely nothing. What it has to do with, again, is allowing the word of God to govern your life. It's how you worship God 
and how you treat your fellow man. Are you doing that according to what does say the Lord, or are you doing that according to what your own mind said? That's what determines if you're being led by the Spirit. He said, but if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by the Spirit that is in you. Talking about the Holy Ghost. But go ahead. Well, therefore, brethren, what? we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Hey, go ahead. He said, but therefore, brother, go ahead and finish that. For if ye live after the flesh, what's going to happen? You shall die. Go ahead. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. He said, therefore, brethren, we're debtors. Not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Not to live according to your worldly lusts or desires. He said, because if you live according to that, if you are led by the natural mind, he said, you're going to die. He's talking about the second death. He's talking about eternal damnation. He said, but if you do the, if you through the spirit, a God spirit, mortify, put to death the deeds of this body, he said, you're going to live. Again, the word of God is to govern your life. And if you allow that to take place, then the Lord is offering you eternal life. Turn over to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Go back to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. To continue to see how one is to operate in the spirit. And this is not something that happens overnight. You to, to grow in grace. You don't come in this word knowing all that you should do. You're constantly learning. But as you learn, as the old saying, when you know better, what do you do? You are supposed to do better. 4 and 29. Go ahead when you get there. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Go ahead. And it may minister grace unto the hearers. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Go ahead. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Again, you're supposed to be doing all of this once you come to the Lord. Again, in the crying His Spirit. He said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. He said, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. He said, don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Again, but that is only if you adhere to it. That is only if you allow it to dwell within you. He said, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and blasphemy, he said, be put away with you, put away from you. He said, with all wickedness. And do what? Verse number 32. And be kind one to another, tender 